TU100 My Digital Life Sense and Sense Ability. So now we're going to look at how a collection of data can be processed using looping. Suppose you have a list of 12 monthly rainfall figures in millimeters for a given year, like this. List positions correspond to months. For example, the rainfall for February, the second month of the year, is at position two in the list. Now suppose the rainfall data is required in inches as well as in millimeters. One millimeter is equivalent to 0.03937 inches, so each item in the rain list needs to be multiplied by that number. We can use a loop to carry out this activity, multiplying each item in turn. An additional list variable, say inch rain list, will hold the converted values. Here's how this works. Now it would be possible to write a program to replace each item in rain list with its equivalent in inches, but why might we want to retain both the original and the converted list? In the next exercise, we'll complete a program to transform a list of rainfall data to do just that. Open project 38 and save it with underscore SOL. This program shown here is incomplete. It uses two list variables, rain list and inch rain list, and a variable month number. The script starts with some initialization, removing any existing items from the two lists. Then it populates rain list with some sample rainfall data in millimeters. Note that the block add split at two is used for this, and we looked at that block earlier in the videos about sorting a CD list. The repeat block, of course, causes the program to loop through the block between its jaws. The intention is that in each loop, an item of rain list is transformed to its equivalent in inches, with the resulting value being added to inch rain list. The variable month number specifies the position in rain list of the item that is dealt with in each loop. Its role is analogous to that of the variable position in previous programs. It's set to one immediately prior to the repeat block and is updated at the end of each loop. Now pause the video and have a go at completing the program by replacing the default 10 currently in the repeat blocks input box with the number of loops actually required, placing a suitable expression in the input box of the add to block so that this block will add to inch rain list the converted equivalent of the item in the current position in rain list. Remember to convert from millimeters to inches by multiplying by 0.03937. You will need to use a block from the operator's palette as part of this. Save your project, then run the program and check by inspecting the list watches on the stage that it works as required. So you should have done the following. Replace the 10 in the repeat blocks input box with the block shown here and place the block shown here into the input box of the add to block. The completed program for this exercise can be found in project 38 completed. We're now going to look at summing the items in a numerical list. We'll use these steps. Create a variable, annual rainfall say, in the case of the list of rainfall data, to hold the running total and initialize it to zero. Add each item in turn to the running total and report the final total. A loop can be used to add each item to the running total. In the following exercise, you'll apply this process to finding the annual rainfall for the year from the list of rainfall values for each month of the year. So open project 39 and save it as 39 underscore SOL. This program is incomplete. The script starts by populating a list of rainfall values as in the previous exercise. The repeat block along with the variable month number will enable the program to loop through the list. Complete the program so that it adds up all the rainfall values and reports the total in a dialog box to the user. If you have difficulties, look at project 30 for inspiration. Save your project and run the program a few times. Try changing some of the items in the list to check that it works as required. So you should have done the following. Created a variable, say annual rainfall. Initialized annual rainfall to zero before the repeat block. 
within the repeat block's jaws, set annual rainfall to the previous value of annual rainfall plus the value of the current list item, that is, changed annual rainfall by the value of the current list item. After the repeat block, positioned a dialog box whose message is the final value of annual rainfall. You might have wondered how to make your program's message to the user more informative. How could you create dialog box messages of the following kind, for example? This kind of message is formed by joining two strings together. In this case, the string annual rainfall in millimetres is and the string formed from whatever is the value of the variable annual rainfall. Remember that annual rainfall's value will vary with different numbers in the list. For example, if annual rainfall's value is the number 593, then the message is formed by joining the string annual rainfall in millimetres is to the string 593. The append with block located under string in the operator's palette is what is required to join two strings together in this way. The two strings should be supplied as the block's two input boxes. If either of its inputs is a number or a variable referencing a number, the block converts that number to its string equivalent. Amend your program's pop-up warning box to use this block to form the message to the user like this. Save your project and run the program a few times, changing some of the items in the list to check that the correct annual total is reported. If you had problems with this exercise, then try running the completed code in slow motion or single stepping through it to see how it works. And the completed program can be found as Project 39 completed. Suppose now that you require the total summer rainfall. In other words, the rainfall for the months of June, July and August, the 6th, 7th and 8th months of the year. Think about how you would modify the program so that it reports the total summer rainfall to the user. In this session, you've been introduced to the idea of a list variable in sense and to some of the related blocks. You have also seen how to use looping to perform some common list-related programming tasks. In the next video, we'll start to look at RSS feeds, files and strings. But for now, thanks for watching.